So where can you find Jesus in Isaiah chapter 28? You're going to see it, my friend. And it's all about that chief cornerstone. And Jesus himself referenced it as speaking about himself, Peter as well, and many others. So you're going to see it right now. Watch this, my friend. Here we go. By the way, this is my new book. It's going to be out August 25th. See Jesus in the Old Testament. Very comprehensive. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to keep the price really low so it's affordable. If not, hey, you can just watch this YouTube channel and the whole playlist, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. It's pretty much going to cover the same thing. So I just want to make sure that this gets out there, that God's word gets out to as many as possible, my friend. All right, let's get into this. Isaiah chapter 28. Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious corner stone. Isn't that awesome, you guys? So right here, this is a rock quarry that you can see in Israel today. And this is where they cut, many of the archaeologists believe this is where Solomon's quarry was, where they cut many of these precious stones. Here's a color picture of it. You could actually do tours and walk inside and check it all out. Pretty awesome stuff, right? Here's the Isaiah scroll. This is a complete scroll that was found in 1946. And it was the only one out of all the Dead Sea Scrolls that was complete, the complete scroll of Isaiah. And it dates back to 200 years before the birth of Christ. And they compared the Bible translations, the the text in our New Testament and our Old Testament and our Bibles, and they compared it with that. It's identical. The only difference was little spelling differences, but the meaning was the same. And it was just amazing. It's a literary miracle that this could even happen. No other book in history has even come close to anything like this, my friend. So this is amazing stuff. So there it is, the scroll of Isaiah. And that's what we're looking at right now, Isaiah 28. Here it is. It's 24 feet long when it's rolled out. Pretty amazing stuff, right? And this is where it was found, this cave of Qumran, as you may have heard it. Here's Israel right here. This is Jordan, Saudi Arabia over here. There's the Dead Sea, Sea of Galilee up here, right? So the Dead Sea is right here, and it's right on the corner there. You're going to see a, a better shot of that right here. Here's the Dead Sea. The Qumran caves are right here. Jerusalem being here and Bethlehem right here. So this is about five or six miles just for reference. So you're looking at, you know, five, 10, about 15 miles away from Jerusalem. Easily, that could easily be walked. Here's the actual cave right here in this Judea in this dry desert around the Dead Sea. Here's a close up of it. This is what they call the Cave of Qumran. And they found uh, these clay jars in there. A shepherd boy found these clay jars in here that were filled with these amazing scrolls that are dated back by the most professional archaeologists of today, the greatest archaeologists, to 200, 150 to 200 years before the birth of Christ. Amazing stuff, right? So Isaiah 28, therefore, this is what the Lord God says. Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious corner stone. There it is again. There's that cave. Amazing stuff. So I'm going to go into the details of this. So back then in Solomon's time, right, when he built his first temple and everybody knew about this, they would lay down, they laid down a precious cornerstone first. This is how all the building was done back then. You first laid the cornerstone and everything was measured off of this when you built, going up, going out this way. Everything was measured off of this right here. It was put in level and perfect and then everything was built according to that, right? So that's how it works, guys. Even, even like uh, retaining walls today, I've done a lot of construction. You would That base layer, that first stone has to be perfect, perfect elevation, perfect height, level, everything, because everything else is going to be built off of that. So that's how it works. That's why it was called the precious cornerstone. So right here, this is how it worked. Everything was built off of that. So this one was firmly placed and then everything else was built off. So when during Solomon's time, this is what happened. The, the precious cornerstone was delivered from that rock quarry 
far away from the Temple Mount because God didn't want to hear any chisel or hammering or construction going on there. He said that. So the quarry was far away. And they communicated that some say they numbered these stones. And this first stone came out, but the builders did not recognize it. Right? The very first stone that came, it was this perfect corner, precious cornerstone came. They didn't recognize it. Uh, history says that they took it and they pushed it off the hill and it kind of rolled down into the Kim- Kidron Valley, right? And that the, the, the shrubs might have grown over it. The thicket kind of grew over it, right? But what happened? Well, they built the rest of it. The rest of these, the, te- the temple stones came and it, they all fit together great. But then they realized, hey, we're missing that cornerstone. The, the chief cornerstone is missing. So they sent work bad to, back to the rock quarry and, and the rock quarry sent work back to them that, hey, we sent that to you guys a long time ago. And they realized they had an aha moment. We rejected that. We rejected that years ago or, or a long time ago. And it was rejected and they went and found it, brought it back up and put it in this precious spot as the chief cornerstone and the temple was complete. Do you see the picture? Everybody knew this story in Jesus' time. So when he referenced Psalm 118 about this chief cornerstone that the builders rejected, they knew about this. They knew about it. All of them did, especially the religious leaders, right? They especially knew about it. So so this is how it was, the chief cornerstone, and that's how that story goes. So Solomon's temple right here was the most magnificent, beautiful temple it was huge. It was like seven times everything that God prescribed for the tabernacle, right? There were seven menorahs, not just one, seven uh, tables of showbread. There was this magnificent area where the ark sat in this holy of holies, the most holy place. Here's a high priest right here. So there would be like a curtain right here, a great veil. And that was uh, Solomon's temple. Much more glorious than Herod's temple. Here's the seven menorahs, right? Uh, Seven tables of showbread. The priests working here. Here's that great veil that separated the holy of holy places. This is a great picture, by the way. I think it probably looked like that. So the one who believes in it will not be disturbed, Isaiah 28 says. And here we have Psalm 118. A stone which the builders rejected has become the chief corner stone. This came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us, let's rejoice and be glad in it. Please, O Lord, do save us, Psalm 118 continues. Please, O Lord, do send prosperity. Remember they were shouting this very thing when Jesus was coming down the mountain, riding on the donkey, entering into Jerusalem. Many of them wanted him to be the Messiah that would come and rule and reign in Jerusalem and and conquer the Romans. But there was two comings. It was almost like there was two Messiahs, and they were expecting two Messiahs back then. They were expecting the Messiah son of Joseph and the Messiah son of David. That's what the the all the rabbis were expecting back then. And one of them was to be the suffering servant like Isaiah 53, right? Psalm 22. And then the other would be the reigning and ruling king like we see in Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48 to the end, right? In many places in Isaiah. And so when we look at this Psalm 118, it's like the crowd was chanting this very psalm. Please, oh Lord, do save us. Save us now, they shouted. Remember in the Gospels? Save us now. Hosanna, Hosanna, they were shouting. And blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That's what they were shouting. But what they didn't realize was, first, the chief cornerstone, who is Jesus, he referenced it as himself, was rejected first time, the first time it was rejected. And when that temple was built up, all the other stones were put in place. Did you know that you and I as believers, we are stones in the temple, the Bible says? When you're a believer in Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus the Messiah, that just that's the Hebrew, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Messiah, when you're a believer in him and a follower of him, you belong to him, you become a stone that's put in place in his temple. You're a part of him, the body of Christ, right? 
it's all spiritual, but someday there's going to be even a physical temple that God will bring in through, remember Ezekiel the prophet, chapters 40 through 48, this is going to be God's temple. And it's going to be a monument or memorial to what Jesus did because it all speaks of him, right? It's not that we need to have sacrifices. It's just going to be a monument. Just like Joshua set up a monument of stones when he led the children of Israel into the promised land. Remember Moses who represented the law could not bring them in, but Joshua, same name as Jesus, Yeshua, could bring them in and he set up a monument of stones that's what this temple is going to be in ezekiel chapters 40 through 48 that's what we see there and that chief cornerstone on the second coming the second visit will be put into place and it will be complete this is what god has done (laughs) this is all the speaking about that precious cornerstone my friend Hey, if you haven't clicked on this playlist, click on it right here. How to find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will be blessed by it. You can check out all the the episodes from the past, how Joseph is a type of Christ, how Moses is a type of Christ. You will be blessed by it. So click on this playlist right here, my friend.